after a change with sea fishing and we've just left beautiful Alderney Harbour where even close in shore the fishing's terrific for bass and mullet and rats and species like that but we're going to head off some 12 miles offshore to a very deep wreck mark and to help me here I've got local man Roddy Hayes. Roddy what do you think we're going to catch on this wreck? Uh, the mainstay of the wreck is ling but maybe you might see some cod, some yeah. big pollock. Yeah. Cod? Big cod, yeah, up to 20 pounds. Really? I'd love, to catch a, I'd love to catch a 20 pound cod, never caught one. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope we do well. Here we are, this is some of the gear we're going to be using out on the wreck today. We've got a two hook trace here made up of these plastic squid or muppets as people like to call them. These have got very strong Ato hooks on them and the trace line itself is 70. It's a bit strong but of course that is used to withstand the abrasiveness of the fish's teeth out there on the wreck. But our real line is only 30 pound breaking strain. We like to keep it as sporting as possible and if we lose the made up ones we've got plenty of squid skirts to make up some more traces. These are some of the perks we're going to be using as well. This is an enormous great thing, weighs about a pound and a half, down to these of about six ounces. And of course it depends how fast the tide's running, which one we actually end up using. And then later on, if we get a chance, come in shore a bit and do a bit of trolling for bass, we're going to be using something like this sinking Rapala, which keeps down because of this big diving vein there. Well, here we are, we've got our baits down there. This is quite deep here, about 160, 170 feet. We're bumping the leads down just on top of the wreck, coming up a couple of turns so the lead doesn't fail. And we're just waiting for that clonk clonk of the ling, hopefully. It's very quiet, the water, so it's a real slack tide. Might help us to give a little bit of movement every now and again. So we all map it sway off the bottom and up comes that ugly great head of the ling and chomps it. Of course, the line's going out a little bit in the tide, so every now and again you've got to let a little bit more line out. And refine the rack again and lift it up. That's why we've got these weak links between the, the bottom loop on the main trace and the, the lead. So if the lead does get caught up, we can break out of it. It's surprising as well, actually, what it actually takes to break 20 pound line at this depth sometimes, doesn't it, Roddy? You can't pull, can't pull out, can you? Get any knocks? No. Yeah. I thought I had a, just a tiny knock. Uh, they should be decisive in this tide, though, shouldn't they? Well, it's slack water. You get a real clonk, shouldn't you? Hmm? I'm so tempted to leave that lead on the bottom there, but. Here we are. Yes! God. I, I thought for a second there I'd got... Oh, that's pulling. I thought for a second there that I'd... I'd let the... Talking too much as usual, I'd let the, the lead hit into... You in? No. Uh. I thought I'd... <laughs> oh. They're pulling well, aren't they? Well, I don't stand much chance of losing him now unless I do something silly. He's well off the bottom. God! <laughs> cool, that is a good fish. That is pulling. No tide. That's got to be a fair fish. Unless I've got two on. Sometimes it happens, doesn't it? You get two, don't you, at a time? <laughs> is that what you call them? <laughs> go, baby, go! <laughs> What will they be? Black bream? Black or red? Oh! Oh, here, this time of year. Oh. Time you get yeah. Of course, pumping something like this up from 160, 170 foot is quite a, an arm-aching job. You don't want too many of them, do you? Oh, yeah, it's a link. Look at that, beautiful in that crystal clear water. Oh! Okay. Here he comes, that's a good fish. He's taking the, taking the bottom hook. Oh, well done, Roddy. First time. Beautiful. Ooh, that's a nice start to the day. Look at that. Oh, 
Oh. Cool. What size do you think that is, Roddy? Twelve, fourteen. Mining So they look a lot bigger than freshwater fish, don't they? And have uh, we got the net uh, caught around the hook there? There we are. Enormous great eyes it's got. Look at that. We're living at that depth. It's got a lot of sea. Hold it up. Let's have a good look at it. It's got an unusual sort of white line to their all these fins. That's beautiful, that isn't it? Look at that. A lovely white lovely line thing. to it. They are. They're. And yet a lot of sea anglers don't really rate this because they don't fight as hard as cod, do they? Do you like them as much as cod or what? I'd like you, they go well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Enormous yeah. great eyes. You can see they live in deep water. Look at the size of that eye and that little feeler there where it feels for the bait. They're quite a nice, quite a nice fish. fish that, that is a tremendous start to the day, isn't it? Let's hold them up like that. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> That's great. Better eating than cod as well. Though. Are they? I think so. Well, we'll have one of these, shall we, tonight? <laughs> yeah, great. Hello. You in? Yes. <laughs> About time, eh? Great, yeah. Like that, your no, no, not off the east coast. They're, they're fighting very fast, muddy water, and they drift down tide, thump a bit. And now and again, you get a, if they open their mouths and drift down tide, you get a, a fair old scrap. But a lot of the small codling, it's a, it's a good old thump on the way up, but we don't get anything like this. Yeah, it is, isn't it? That looks a very good fish, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes, here we are. Yeah. Oh, it looks a bit steady to me. Oh dear. Don't like the look of that one. Yeah. That's, uh, I think that's steel. Phew. Let's give that a bit of a shake. Oh, it's no good. Oh, I'm going to have to have some of my medicine. It's time anyway. Oh. Oh. Hmm. You know, this medicine reaches the part. <laughs> Other medicine stuff, you know that, don't you? Whew, that's better. You can't have any medicine while you're catching on these fish. Oh, I think we're off again. No, we're not. God, that won't come off. Ah. No, we're going to have to let that loose again. Bang goes me perk. Another 5.95. Is it coming up? Yeah? Should be here in a minute. Ah, oh, it's coming up. It's a, it's a cod. It's a nice one, too. Cod, <laughs> Ooh, okay. Well done. Oh, great. Oh, that is a nice fish. Look at that. It's a clonking great cod, isn't it? Thank you, Mr. Watson. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. That's slightly bigger than... Yep. That was hooked in the... Just in the scissors, and that's come out, I think, at some time, and pulled back into the cheekbone. There, there you go. That's a nice old kipper. Look at that. Oh, it's long and lean, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, they are, aren't they, actually? Enormous great head on it. Look at those jaws. Look at those. Cool. Look at that. Some, some strong teeth in there. Very strong teeth. And they've got these rasping teeth in the front there when they grip things and crush things. Oh, yeah. That's the crab gear, that is. Yeah. Pretty fish, aren't they? Yeah, they're lovely when they're Beautiful. Fish. Lovely lateral. I love that lateral line, the way that comes down there like that. Beautiful fish. Okay, let's put him in the fish box. Oh. The fish in here in Alden is so varied, I just couldn't resist the little plonk off the end of the commercial jetty here. It's a bit noisy though, that crane unloading, but it doesn't seem to matter to the fish. There's lots of little baby pollock down here alongside the woodwork and little wrasse and things like that. But I fancy a go for the mullet and garfish and I've got a bucket full of local shervy here which is blood and guts and beef all mixed up and in my pocket I've got some raw steak for bait strip and I've got my 14 foot trotting rod. See how we do. Oh, well, that's handy. Well, he's left me the drop net. Can't do this sort of 
fishing without one really, we're sort of 20 foot up the, up the wall here. The secret of this sort of fishing of course is to work the, the mullet and the gars up with the tide and keep a good supply of the old shervy going in. Not too much, just a bit of a smell in the water. Right, before we start we'll get the old drop net over the side, because otherwise we'll look a fool if we get a fish and nothing to land it in. Right. Now I'm going to have to move it over this column here. Right, that's got the net just below the surface there. It's tied up. Okay, let's have a look at the tackle. Actually, this is really standard sort of freshwater chubbing gear I'm using. Size 10 hook, eyed, tied direct to six pound line. And the float is the sort of float that I'd use on the Wentham in the winter for long trotting. It's a four swan shot chubber. Right, let's rig it up. I think I'm going to start off about seven or eight feet deep down there and see how we go, because the tide's making all the time. There we go. Let's put the bait on a nice thin slither of raw steak. It's a great bait for clear water sea fish. Steak, it's the... The uh, blood in it they like, of course. The only trouble is after about five minutes the, the blood's gone and you uh, you have to change your bait. There we are. Right, well those guards seem to be working quite close in so I won't go too far out. I'll go straight out over the shervy there. There we are, there's already a, a good sized gar working through there. It's lovely watching them from... It's high up platform here and there's lots of little tiny pollock and one or two even smaller wrasse. There's a little tiny <laughs> pollock nibbling my bait now. I can watch him from here. I can't see that big gar though. And he seems to come in and out so quickly. It's almost like fishing in an aquarium. It's absolutely beautiful. The water's so clear. Right, I set the float a little deeper and have a bit of a further cast out. This water's so clear, it's ever so difficult to work out what the depth here is. It could be 20 foot, it could be 40 foot. I think it's nearer 20, 25 though. That's better, that, uh, that little petrol patch there has gone off the surface and I can watch the bait going all the way down. Lovely to see something knobbly on the drop. You could literally see what happens with a float if it did. It'd come probably flying out of the water as the fish moves off. A lift bite at mid-depth. Hello, that gar's seen it. Oh, I just saw him. No, he missed it. In fact, just as I said that, the gar came through and I thought he was going to take it on the drop, but he didn't. He's obviously interested. Oh, there's gulls everywhere here now. Local skipper's doing a bit of gutting on his boat and the gulls have moved in by the thousands. What about that for the birds? Hitchhop's birds, huh? This must be about the busiest place in the islands today. Look at this whopper coming over. Here we go again. There's another formation coming over. 
I don't know what they are, not very good on planes. Looks lovely though, doesn't it? What a lovely sight across the harbour. Lovely to see all these old planes, beautiful. It's even more important to think of the reasons why they're really here and doing it, perhaps. Well, minutes ago I did actually have a daft snappers at a bit as I wound it in but I subsequently had three or four minutes of doing nothing but retrieving it and uh, hasn't brought any response at all. Let's bung a bit more of this here evil gonk out. Known around this part of the world as Chervy. The freshwater angler is ground bait. Oh, hello, we're in. Oh, we've got a gar. Yes, here we are. Oh, yes. Well, would you believe it? I was just saying that and we're in. <laughs> They're a very acrobatic fish, these. Very acrobatic. Oh. Now, do I use a drop net on this or do I lift him up? Cool, that was a bit of luck. It went in the net first time. I know, there's... A lot of holes in this net of roddies. I hope it doesn't slip out of one before we get it up. Ooh, it's got, ah, here we go. Look, <laughs> seems an awfully big net, doesn't it? For, for such a little fish, but there he is. Oh, look at that big garfish you've got. Unusual, isn't it? Got all those teeth in there. Oh, poor, our teeth as well. It's got this sort of iridescent blue back, almost tuna mackerel blue there. It's got quite athletic lines to it, really. There we are, look at that beak. It's a wonder you ever get the hook in there. That's why you've got to give them such a long time to take the bait, because it's got to go right back past that jaw full of those fine little teeth. Oh, well, we got one at last. <laughs> How are we doing, Mike? We're on the wreck yet? We're just coming up to it now, John. Great. <laughs> What's he got there? <laughs> Hello, I'm in two. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Go on, I have to get that off the bottom quickly. Away from the wreck. Oh. <laughs> Do you know this? Got there? Oh, I don't know. God, that's going. What do you think it is? Yeah. <laughs> do you know, this is magic, this, isn't it? Two good fish on at once. You don't often get this when you're fishing, do you? Oh. Hello, we come to a bit of a problem now. Who's going to net whose fish? What are we going to do? Well, all right, well, I'll get the net for you. Oh. Can you see it, yeah? <coughs> hey? These fish put on this tackle, 30 pound line is absolutely incredible, isn't it? Yeah. What have you got? Oh, I don't know, I can't see it. It's still way down. Whew. You know, I'm sweating like a pig. I don't think I'm, I think I'm out, out of condition or something like that. Oh. <laughs> I don't use boilies, what are you on about? <laughs> I'm a lunch you meat man. Oh. 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 This is lovely on first. This is really. <laughs> You're right, John. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> 
Have you worked out who's going to do the netting, yeah? No. <laughs> oh, well, look. Us freshwater anglers, we're, we're used to doing it one-handed. Let's see. Well, there's yours. Mine. Uh, oh, no wonder. Look at that propeller. Oh, look at that. Hang on, hang on. I'll do it for you. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. Do you think this is a Pollock? Oh, do you want me to... Don't lose it now, Roddy. Slowly. Well done, mate. Well done. Hold it there. See if we can get them in both in together. Or do you want to get that out first? OK. Oh, that's a super fish. Look at that. Oh. I wonder if we didn't hit into a shoulder pollock there, and that's what this is. Oh, that is really... <laughs> that is beautiful. Look at that. Have we got a matching pair? Oh. Here it comes, Roddy. Got the net. No, it's a, oh, it's a big cod. Quick, get that net. Oh, it's a big one. Cool, look at that. Cool, what a kipper. <laughs> oh, look at that. Shoot. <laughs> hey, that's magic. That is magic. Look at this pet. Do you want to hold that one up? Oh. What a pair of fish. Okay. What a pair of fish. Right on the net, that one. Oh. get the hook out of this one. Whew. Oh. Come here. Oh, that's one of my biggest cod ever, I think. Oh, I don't know. Do you reckon? Yeah. It's a big one, isn't it? Whoa. <laughs> Nice now that is magic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Roddy, what are you going to give your pollock then? Fifteen. Fifteen. Oh, I don't think you're going to be far off either. Yeah. Hold of him there. Oh. Okay. What's that? Uh -huh. No, you're wrong. That is seven, that. seventeen and a quarter. Cool. What a fish. Well, about right. <laughs> Here, okay. What are you going to give the cod then? You reckon? Yeah. Oh. I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> My first 20 pound cod. 21. <laughs> cool. That is tremendous, huh? Isn't that tremendous? <sighs> Wonderful. Put them in the box. Well, I don't know, Roddy, we've got an enormous great of all the fish here. We've got all these ling, these whopping great big cod and that lovely big pollock of yours. And all in just a few hours fishing too. That's absolutely wonderful. Thanks a lot for showing us the ropes here in all, isn't it? It's a wonderful end to the programme. My pleasure. <laughs>